All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below in the description so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO Gym. And the QBO Gym is a place where we have numerous hands-on exercises that simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Every single month we come out with new exercises for you to practice your skills and we break it down for you into four different sections. So today we are going to be working in the November cool down section. At the top here is a little animated video to let you know what you're gonna be doing for Craig that month. He is our fictitious business owner. Further down is an interactive quiz to test your knowledge. And at the bottom here are all of the exercises within this section. So today we're going to finish the cool down section by practice using the cash flow planner. You will need to be in the sample company. If you're not sure how to get into the sample company or get your own free QBOA account, go ahead and click on the link below in the description. So our scenario today is that Craig doesn't really see how QBO can help him plan for the future. A tool that Craig might find helpful though is the cash flow planner. The cash flow planner allows you or Craig to add predicted data uh, for future data, excuse me, and view charts based on different scenarios without actually affecting the books. It uses three types of data. From your books, transactions are based on actual data in QBO. Predicted data is the anticipated transactions based on historical behavior and upcoming transactions. And added by you reflects transactions you have manually added in the tool, but not in the books. So let's take a look at this tool. From the left nav bar, we need to hover over dashboards and then select planner. Here I am in the sample company. This is the dashboard. Over on the left nav bar is dashboards. Um, hover over that and then select planner. If this is your first time using the uh, cash flow planner, this little pop up is going to show up. It's a little video from QBO, just giving you a little understanding of what this area is for. Go ahead and click on the green start planning button. And another pop-up is going to show up, again, giving you a little more information about this section. Go ahead and click on the green Let's Go button. And this is the Cash Flow Planner section. So we've done step two and step three. So the number that appears prominently is the current bank total of any connected bank accounts, not the QBO total. Because it is an accurate representation of what's happening at the bank, this number will not change unless or until the bank itself has different data. You also see this number when processing bank transactions. So let's take a look at what that, what that is. Click on bank transactions on the left nav bar. and it will take us to the bank center itself. If you get any pop-ups, um, just go ahead and close out of them. This is just QBO trying to give you a little information about what this area is for. When processing bank feeds, QBO will always show you both the actual balance at the bank and the balance of your connected accounts in QBO. These two numbers are rarely the same because you are always recording things in QBO before they actually come through the bank. So that is located right here. This is what the bank balance is, and then this is the balance in QBO. You will see in the sample company that the bank balance of the checking account is negative. However, this is almost never the case in real life scenario. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna to return to the cash flow planner by hovering over dashboards and then selecting planner again. So hover over dashboards and then click on planner to get back to the screen that we were on before. Now, the important part of the cash flow planner is that it is the graphical representation of the increase and decrease of the bank balance over time. The solid portion shows the past, the line represents today, and then the shaded portion shows the projected future. So here's the past, here's the line for today, and then this is the projected future. The default is to look for a year's worth of data, but since there is not a whole year's worth of data in the sample company, let's go ahead and change this so that it's only the last three months. Under the bank balance, click on the arrow um, there and then select three months. That is right here. Click on that arrow, select three months, and now it's spread it out so that you're only seeing the last, the, the three months, a uh, three month period time, both the past and then in the future as well. 
So you can use your cursor to hover over any day in the graph to see the actual historical activity or the projected future activity for that day. Projected future activity is based on historical repeated behavior. So the longer you use QBO, the more accurate it's going to be. And then it also shows any scheduled recurring or it uses any scheduled trans recurring transactions you have set up for that projected future activity. In addition, QBO will assume that an invoice or a bill will be paid on the day that they are due. So we're going to take a deeper look at this in future steps. The current view is the cash balance view, which shows the bank account balance relative to zero or another threshold value that you can set. We're gonna look at that threshold a little bit later. You can also see the money in and money out values relative to each other. So to do this, um, we're going to, to see this, we're going to click on money in, money out. So here right now is that cash basis it's showing right now, but let's go ahead and click on this money in, money out to see how this changes. And you will see um, the past month and then the current month. You will see in the past month that it is solid. And then in the current month, some is solid and some is actually shaded. And that is reflecting the fact that there are still transactions that are projected for this month. You can hover over your cursor or you can use your cursor to hover over any month in the graph to see the actual historical activity from past months or the projected future activity for current and future months. So here, as you can see, you can hover over it. You see a more, um, more information. I can't scroll up without it disappearing, um, but you can see all of that data there from the past and then what the projection is for the current month that you are in. For the remainder of this exercise, we're going to be looking at the cash balance view. So click on cash balance to get back to that screen. Under the main graphic, the next section shows that there are 13 overdue transactions. If you scroll down a little bit, you see that that is right there. Now, as mentioned previously, QBO assumes that invoices and bills are going to be paid on the day that they are due. If they are not, then QBO can't use them in the historical numbers, but it also can't use them in the projections either because it doesn't know when they are expected to be paid. You can enter these projections projections manually, however. Entering these predicted dates doesn't affect your actual books. That's the power of the cash flow planner. You get to enter hypothetical situations and then see what would happen. So we're going to click on update on that line. That is the blue um, link right here. Click on that. And when you do, you will get the pop-up of the 13 overdue transactions. We're going to click on the first cookies by Kathy transaction to see that expanded. So click into that and you will see um, the date that it was due and then the amount of that invoice. The cash flow planner allows us to see how it would affect the books, uh, affect the bank balance, excuse me, if Kathy paid her invoice at some point in the future. We're going to say that Kathy will pay her invoice at the end of this month, the current month that you are doing this exercise in. So in the date field, type a lowercase t for today and then a lowercase h for the end of the month and then click update. Having that h there um, at, is at the end of the word month. So that's how you can remember it. However, just keep in mind that you must enter a date in the future. So if you're doing this exercise on the last day of the month or it's showing that um, it is due at a different on a date um, in a past month, you will need to enter the last day of the next month. So you'll click on the calendar icon and navigate to the correct date. So if I click into this and I try typing in uh, the M and H, it's gonna show because that due date was back in September, it's showing it as the last date. If I click out of it, it's saying that I need to choose a future date. So if that's the case um, for you as well, you need to click on the calendar icon, go into the current month that you are doing this exercise in, and then click on the last day of that particular month, and then click on update. Now, if we click on done, then we can hover over the last day. Um, we'll see how this has changed, I'm sorry, the graphic. So click on done and then hover over the last day of the month. It's the green button done there. And then hover over the last day of the month. For me, that is the end of November. And it's showing that money in on that $75. 
The timeline shows the projected deposit was just made, but it's such a small number that it's hard to see uh, much of a difference on the graph. So we're going to do the same that step um, with all of the overdue transactions. Again, we're gonna click on update and then do the same thing, um, changing the date. So click on the blue update here and then click on each individual one. You're gonna need to either type in MH if it's due the same month that you were doing this current um, exercise um, or hit the calendar icon and then scroll to the month that you were in and then click on the last day. Once you do, you click on update. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes here to go ahead and do the same thing. Click on that date, click on the calendar icon, click on the uh, last day of the month you're in and then click update. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that and you can do that on your screen as well. And as you can see, as you keep doing this, um, your dates, the due dates are going to be um, closer and closer to the date that you are currently doing this activity or this exercise. So just know um, that it'll be a little bit of a quicker process as you continue going down. You won't have to do as much scrolling. So again, clicking on the transaction, clicking on the calendar icon, last day of the current month you were in, clicking on updates. We are almost done. I have only four more left to do. And if you get to the month uh, that you're currently in, you can always do that trick that we said before, that MH. You just type that in and it'll go to um, today's date and then the last day of that particular month. So once you have updated all of those, it will uh, disappear for you. Um, and you will see that the graph has made adjustments based on the um, projections that we just did. The projected cash balance is um, beginning to look in green, which is a positive indication here of the balance. We're going to hover over the last day of the month so that we can see all of the totals of all the transactions that we just processed, those 13 that were overdue. Find the last day of the month that you are currently in and you will see the money in and money out has made, um, is gone from zero to the current totals based off of what we just did with those 13 overdue transactions. So the next section of the cash flow planner is the list of transactions that affect the future projections. These are the ones that are currently expected to hit the books, but you can remove them to see what kind of an effect it would be on the bank balance. So let's say, for example, that Craig thinks that he can negotiate the bill from Diego down to $100. We can make that change and see what would happen. So to do that, we just need to click on Diego's Road Warrior Body Shop. Um, and as a note here, you can use the filters to show only certain transactions in the list so that you can decide which ones you would like to adjust. But for right now, we're going to click on Diego's Road Warrior Body Shop. So scroll down a little bit. It has, up, this is the upcoming up <laughs> section. Here is that filters that I was just talking about. But go ahead and click on Diego Diego's Road Warrior Body Shop so that you can get it expanded. We are going to change that amount to $100 and then click on update. Remember, this is for planning purposes only, so your change here is not actually going to affect Craig's books. So change that $755 to $100. Click on the green update button. And now we're going to scroll back up to the top so that we can see that graph again. As you can see, not having to pay that huge bill is going to make a significant effect on Craig's up balance. In addition to adjusting the upcoming transactions that are already in the books, we can use the planner to add new ones. So going back here, look how much of a difference this is making. It's getting bigger and bigger, um, which is in the positive direction. So what if uh, what would it look like if Craig landed that $20,000 contract that we talked about in the previous exercise? We're going to click on add item to see what this hypothetical situation would look like. So scroll down a little bit underneath the graph, you see this add item. Click on that to get an expanded um, box right here. You'll notice that you can create a money in or money out transaction um, and you can set it up as one time or have it as recurring. 
uh, which is right here. Since this is a $20,000 contract that we are talking about him being awarded, this would be a money in, so we are going to leave that as is. In the description field, you have to add something here, so we are going to call this Big One-Time Contracts. Click into the description box and then Big One-Time Contract right there. The amount we said was $20,000. Um, once we enter that in, then we are going to click on Save. So click into the amount box, put $20,000, and then click on the green Save button. We're going to scroll back up to the top here and you will see a huge increase here in the green projected area, um, which is a positive cash flow. Notice that currently QBO shows zero as the threshold. The threshold is the number that the business owner really doesn't want to drop below. Of course, nobody wants to drop below zero. So it's always good business practice to have a buffer in this account. Dropping below this number would indicate that you need to put in some effort quickly to turn things around. So let's see what happens if we set up a different threshold for Craig than the current zero. We're gonna click on the small gear icon above cash balance. So that is over here, click on that. And you will see this threshold section right here. Currently it is set at zero, but we are going to change this to $10,000. Um, so let's enter that $10,000 and then click save. As a note here, you can control which linked accounts are included in the planner. So if you don't wanna see the savings, and uh, savings account included in all of this, you can uncheck that um, or you can have them all checked here. So I said again, the threshold is going to be $10,000. So click into the box and then type in $10,000, 10,000, there we go. And then click on the green save button. And now you will see that the threshold line has changed. It is li the line right here is at that $10,000. So QBO again has moved that threshold threshold line so that you can set your targets. Um, the color does not change, however, so you'll have to look very carefully at this chart now that um, we have made that threshold adjustment. So now that Craig has the cash flow planner at his fingertips, perhaps he can use it to make better decisions and then plan better for the future of his business. But that is how you would use the cash flow planner. And if you have any questions or want to know more about the QBO gym, just go ahead and click on the link below in the description. We have finished the November issue of the QBO gym. Congratulations, you did a great job. Keep on practicing and honing in on those skills. And we will see you in the next month's issue coming out at the beginning of December.